Hey, what's up, boys? I'm here back with the fun with Amit Shano. So, last time we didn't discuss the nations of the first coalition and the second coalition. So, today, I'm not going to discuss that. I'm going to discuss the third coalition and the fourth coalition. Yes, we'll discuss the nations of the third and the fourth coalition. So, where we have left it? We have left it at the second coalition. We have left Napoleonic Wars. We have left the Napoleonic Wars. We have left the we have we have left the Napoleonic Wars at eighteen o two, when the when the war of the Second Coalition ended, with the Battle of Marengo right here. If I can annotate, many of you can see, but still. This Battle of Marengo that happened right here. The Battle of Marengo where Napoleon got a good victory and the Austrians sued for peace. Next thing that came was that what happened, like the second coalition happened in 1802 and the third coalition happened in around 1804. What happened in all these years? Why? What happened? Okay, right? So... Let's discuss what happened. After his victory, here I'm saying, after his victory in the Second Coalition, Napoleon went out there and re and regarded himself as the emperor of the French Empire of, of the French Republic. What does that mean? As we discussed, Fra Napoleon came overthrew the Directory and then made a consulate, in which he was the only consul. He was the only consul. He was not emperor. Then, after his victory in the Battle of Marengo, he goes out there and says, okay, you know what? I'm making myself the emperor of France. And hence, now France is an empire and em Napoleon is its emperor. Right? But with that, Napoleon also does one more thing. Napoleon establishes himself as the ruler of the... As the ruler of the... I'm, I'm so terrible at this. As a ruler of in of Italy, like I'll tell you in a minute by this line. Well, this was France's southern border, and Napoleon took. Napoleon took. This no, not this much. This much Italy in him. This much Italy, which is mentioned here. He took this Italy and made himself the king of Italy of this section. Okay? Because he was kind of, yeah, king of Italy now. Now what happens? Austrian emperor, Francis II, hears that Napoleon has made himself the, made himself the king of Italy. And that angers Francis II. Basically, the, why? Because now Fran Francis II's influence in Italy is gone. Why? As Napoleon has become the king of Italy, so all of basic basically Italy is Napoleon is basically in French hands and there's nothing for Austrians. Hence our Francis the second has no influence, has no influence, has no influence in Italy. This this angers the Austrian Emperor Francis the second and he goes to war. He's he go he goes out there with to the British. They two together make the third coalition. But with that, Russia also joins the third coalition. Because Russia is seeing the ambitions of Napoleon and like I mean you stop that. The balance of power is wrong. So the whole reason Austria joined is because Napoleon made himself emperor of Italy. Why did why did Austria go to war? Because Napoleon made himself king of Italy. And why did Russia join? Russia joined because he wanted balance of power. They all joined. The third coalition happens. The third coalition is Napoleon's best. So, let's remove all this and I'll tell you everything. Through stamps. Regard this as Napoleon. This star as Napoleon, right? This star. These stars as Napoleon. So Napoleon is way back here. 
and let's make that. The Austrian Austrian army is here. The Austrian army is here. This is the this is here is Napoleon. Here's the Austrian army. The Austrian army under General Mack. Under who? General Mack. And I'm gonna get the mouse out. And then okay, that that was terrible. Okay, now let me do this like this. I'm so sorry for what is happening, guys. So the poem is way back here, right? Way back here. And with that, the Austrian army under General Mack is here. Right? And then there's one thing weird. The Russian army is here. So what is the Russian plan? I just write a text that Russian Russian army under General Chuzo. The Russian army under General Kutuzov is here. The Russian army under General Kutuzov under General Kutuzov is here. The Austrian army under General Mack is here. So the plan. Now here what I'm saying. The main climax. The plan of the Russians is that reinforce this Austrian army Go quickly, reinforce the Austrian army, <clears throat> and invade France through here. This is their plan that is about to be foiled. Why? To make this plan work, to make this plan even work, you need quickness. And General Kutuzov is in a quick commander. So, before he before he could you know, to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna make a text here. So, uh, Mac. So, before General Kutuzov's Russian army could reach General Max Austrian army, Napoleon from here. Napoleon reaches General Max army before. Okay, you want to make this easy? I'm gonna remove the arrows. Now, General Kutuzov's army before the before General Kutuzov's army can reinforce General Max army. What I'm saying, before Kutuzov's army could gen could you know could you know reinforce General Max Austrian army. Napoleon reaches. General Mack before means look at the distance difference. Look at the distance difference. This looks like small for France, but it's very big. But even though the even though the even though the distance was so much high, Napoleon reached General Mack. Napoleon reached General Mack one or three or four weeks earlier than General Kutuzov. So that's what is weird. Like the speed of Napoleon's army, he's reaching, he's reaching three four weeks before his enemy can reach. So what happens? He reaches General Max army, and now I'm gonna show you something weird. Now look at this. Zoom in on this. On this. Zoom in on this photo specifically. This smaller photo. Right? So what happens is, as we can see here, I know date, I know date, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before General Kutuzov's army, 
before General Kutuzov's army, which is here, before General Kutuzov's army could reach the Austrian army of General Mack, which is here, Napoleon came. Napoleon came with his marshals here. Look at this. Napoleon coming with 200,000 troops. 200,000 troops. This is actually wrong, I think. I think it I think this number is wrong. I don't think Napoleon had 200,000 troops. I'm pretty sure. So, but the main point for me to tell you is, right, is that Napoleon reached before General Kutuzov, right, and then ambushes the army of General Mack. What does he do? Ambush. Ambush the army of General Mack. Look at this. And now General Mack is stuck in the village of Ulm. You can see here the village of Ulm. He is yep. He is stuck in the village of Ulm. Now think if you were General Mack. Think if you were General Mack. Yes, I can run away from the from the north. No, from the north. Who is from the north? Marshal Ney. Marshal Ney is in the north. Okay, maybe I can escape from the east. Who's in the east? Marshal Lands. Marshal Lands, Marshal Bessiers, Marshal Marmont. You know, Marshal Marmont, Marshal Lanes, Marshal Bessiers. They're all there. Okay, what about the south? What about the south? Well, if you try to escape from the south, no, no, no. If you try to escape from the south, you're gonna face Marshal Solat. Who? Who? Marshal Salt and this one, one cop here. You basically can't run away at this point. You can't run away. You're stuck. You're stuck and you can't run away. And with addition to this, Marshal Murad's 50,000 cavalry is, is always charging at the opponent. Marshal Murad's 50,000 cavalry is always charging General Mack's army. So what happens? General Mack, looking at this terrible situation, just wait a minute. Just look at the situation. Wait a minute. Just look at the situation. General Mack is stuck. He can't go anywhere. He's stuck in the city of Ohm. So Mack decides that, okay, now hear what I'm saying. Follow my lead. Mack thinks that, okay, if General Kutuzov's reinforcements come, they can break my, they can come in, relieve us, and then we can fight Napoleon together. No. Why? He sends someone to figure out where is General Kutuzov. He sends someone to see to see where General Kutuzov is. The the reporter tells him he's one or two weeks away. General Max General Mac losing loses all hope. General Mac loses all hope and says, Okay, th- this is the right time to surrender. Why? If I don't surrender, my troops are gonna die. I'm surrendering. Okay, he surrenders. Napoleon wins the victory. Now what happens, boys? Now what happens? So, now this happens. That. General Kutuzov sees that, you know, General Mack has surrendered. Sees that General Mack has surrendered. Uh, General Mack has surrendered. So he retreats and he keeps retreating. Question comes, where is, where is he going to do his stand? Because you should have, you should have this much, this much intelligence that you just can't keep running with a fast army like Napoleon. You can, you're, your whole army will get smacked. So he keeps retreating and he finally, 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 finally 
makes a stand at the village of Austerlitz. Here, at the village of Austerlitz. And all oh, oh, things are about to be spicy in, Aust in the Austerlitz now. Both, both sides line up for battle because, you know, General Kutuzov is now in Austerlitz. General Kutuzov, when he gets to Austerlitz, General Kutuzov, when he gets to Austerlitz, is reinforced by Tsar Alexander. By Tsar, okay, I need to remove this. He is reinforced by, he is reinforced by Prince Bragantian's 30,000 Corps. Liechtenstein's 4,600 soldiers, another 8,500 guard, guard. Tsar is, he's also reinforced with the guard, with the troops of Tsar Alexander the first, the second, sorry, second. And many more forces are reinforced. Many more Austrian and Russian forces are reinforced, are reinforced with Kutuzov. And they fight Napoleon at Austerlitz. They fight him at Austerlitz. Now, this is Napoleon's greatest strategy. What am I saying? This is Napoleon's greatest strategy. What is Napoleon doing? Now, I want you to observe this. Please observe this, okay? If you really want to learn Napoleon's strategies, you want to observe this. So... What is our observation through this? That the right flank of the French army is very, very weak. Is what? Very, very weak. And another conclusion we can get to is the left flank. What am I saying? The left flank, the middle flank, or we can the central part, are very much strong. Why has Napoleon kept a weak right wing? So when we talk about the war, we'll discuss this now. Tsar Alexander the Second, Tsar Alexander, Tsar Alexander the Second sees this. The generals see this. The generals see that Napoleon has a weak, weak right wing. They all charge at him. Look at this. 13,000 troops, 11,000 troops, 8,000 troops, all attacking what? Napoleon's right wing, which is made up of roughly, roughly 16,000 men. Now, little, little did they know, little did they know, Napoleon wanted just that. Napoleon wanted them to charge at his right wing. So what does Napoleon do now? The Russians push into the right wing. What Napoleon does now? Now there's no right wing to protect the Russian army, right? Hear what's, hear what's happening? Now there's no right wing to protect the Russian army. So who will protect the Russian army? Nobody. These, you know, about 30,000 troops, about 30,000 troops will protect the will protect the left and the central flank against who against about 50000 men with great marshals with great marshals great behavior so this is what napoleon does marshal lands you find prince bagatsian's 30000 corps mura charge the cavalry bernadotte divert the your infantry way a lot this corp hit him in the center Break their center parts. More corps go out there and destroy Prince Bagantium's and this corp. This corp. The battle rages on, and one thing happens the Russian left flank and the Russian central flank. What? Left flank and the center flank falls. And then the right flank of the Russian armies is surrounded. Why, look. Just think about this. 
the right flank and the no, the left flank and the center flank of the Russian army are destroyed. What will happen now? Undo this all. And and just think if this central and left flank are destroyed. And Napoleon got up to here. What will Napoleon do? He will ambush the right flank of the Russian army. Up no, I'm sorry. Now your Saval now now your question will be I'm just I had a little bit of I did a little bit of a joke with you guys. So my question to you is or we can say you're probably will question this. Why hasn't the French right flank collapsed? Great question. Why hasn't the right flank of the French army collapsed? It's so weak. Well, the only reason is Marshal Davoud, with his very much trained troops, is able to motivate them and motivate them to just hold on until the time Napoleon breaks the sorry, the right wing and the central wing, right wing and the central wing of the Russian army, they go on and ambush the left flank. I'm sorry, I called the right and the left a little bit different. This is the right, this is the left flank. This, this, this Russian flank is the right flank. This Russian flank is the left flank, okay? This Russian flank that I've highlighted is the left flank. So the left flank tries to break left wing, the left, the left wing of the Russian army tries to break the right wing of the French army, which is very, which is very weak. But due to motivation, they don't break. And then the left wing of the Russian army is ambushed and they're destroyed. And basically, this is a very much dominating Napoleon victory. Like Russians couldn't do anything. Napoleon inflicted double the losses. Double the losses. Look what I'm saying. Double the losses on Rus on the Russians. So the Russians retreat. And what happens? After the, the Battle of Austerlitz, after the Battle of Austerlitz, Austrians do, do the Treaty of Pressburg and they're out of the coalition and eventually the third coalition is ended. Why has the third coalition ended? Why the third coalition ended? Well, because the main because the main figure of the third coalition, the Austrians, have signed a treaty and removed and have removed themselves from the coalition, which is the Treaty of Pressburg. So the third coalition ends. Napoleon is claimed as the Emperor of France, King of Italy. But right after this third coalition, a fourth coalition will be made, and Napoleon will again fight more enemies. Stay tuned for that. I know yeah, I said third and fourth coalition, but this but this video is already too big. This vid this video is already too big. So we so we're gonna discuss the fourth coalition later. What did I say? The fourth coalition, the fourth coalition later. Bye.